This is the second part in the photoelectric effect, and this time we're going to look at some uh, experimental results and graphs. Um, so uh, they'll set up a circuit um, to, to do some experiments. Here's our photo cell, and um, they'll connect it to an ammeter. It'll be a very sensitive ammeter, it might be a galvanometer. Sometimes you'll see it as a micro ammeter or just a G for galvanometer. And um, what uh, what they'll do is um, to measure the voltage uh, produced in the photo cell they'll apply a, a variable voltage from variable supply to oppose uh, what's going to oppose the electrons um, the electron flow and they'll measure the voltage of that because that gives something I think it's something that just gives more consistency than trying to measure the voltage of the cell uh, itself. And um, so you set this until the current equals zero. That's why you need a very sensitive one, so it goes very, very small. Um, so you can get it very precisely down to zero. Um, and so as incident light comes in, current is driven around the circuit um, and uh, the supply stops it. So that, that particular voltage is measured. Um, compared to the frequency of the incident light and uh, results are taken and graphs are formed. So uh, for this you would get a graph of, this is kind of jumping a little bit around but they're also interrelated, it's hard to, uh, to, to change it. This, this is a voltage and this is the frequency and you see a uh, graph something like this with various readings here. You don't actually get readings below, but you can uh, carry on to find the y-intercept there. Um, the point where it crosses, they call that f naught, um, and um, and this is the threshold frequency beyond which no electrons are emitted. Um, so any light of a lower frequency won't produce a voltage in the voltage cell, and you won't need any voltage from the voltmeter. The dot dot dot, as I said down here, is just to showing where it would continue, so you can find the um, that that y intercept, which is really important. Uh, they call that well, no, they don't call it that. Just there. Um, now, this is where we get into the uh, the voltage and kinetic energy link, because remember we're concerned with the kinetic energy of electrons. Um, voltage, remember, is the amount of energy per charge that passes through a circuit. We could also say that this is the amount of energy given to the charge uh, of an electron on an electron um, as the voltage, uh, the photovoltaic cell um, drives it around, so it's the energy given to the charge. But we could rearrange that um, to make this a kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is then equal to um, EK equals VQ or, or um, instead of Q, we use E for the charge on an electron, uh, E times V. So on this way we can see the kinetic energy is directly proportional to the voltage, and we can actually convert um, our equation, uh, instead of having V on here, our graph I should say, instead of having V on here, we can make that the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons as a function of the frequency. The gradient will change um, slightly because you're dealing with E, uh, the charge on an electron, but um, the, uh, the overall proportion, actually no, the slope's not going to change, is it? It's just a constant factor all around. But anyway, this is the kinetic energy now, so a new graph, kinetic energy um, against frequency. And we've got our, our measured data slightly transformed uh, using this. And we extrapolate below, um, and there's a point where we have this, and we call it phi. This is, this is this equation here, PHI is phi, Greek is very interesting, Greek letter phi. Um, this one here, just as a sidetrack, that is, you call it pi, but it's actually pronounced P. I did a little bit of uh, study into the ancient Greek language um, one year, which was very interesting. But that's a sidetrack. Phi, which is not P, because it's got an H, it's phi, um, is uh, a particular... Uh, because this is the energy axis, this is an energy amount. It's the minimum uh, energy needed um, to 
uh, well it's not the kinetic energy, but it's the energy needed to impart to the electrons to free them from the metal surface. So uh, minimum energy required to free them from the surface uh, of the metal. And different metals, having different electronegativities, will want to hold on to electrons at different amounts, some more stronger than others. So they'll have different work functions according to the different metals, different phi values. Now, um, it also fits in nicely into, into the equation. This, this, as I said before, is just the equation of the line, where uh, phi is the intercept, minus phi, that is. Uh, F is the frequency, and H is a constant, uh, which is Planck's constant. Max Planck, Max Planck's constant. And uh, we saw before that that was uh, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. And it's proportionally constant. Uh, you do the measurements, and that's the gradient of the line. Um, so the kinetic energy at any point, let's do this in a different color, kinetic energy at any point is equal to H times that value of F plus, uh, sorry, minus uh, what's been taken off for the amount of energy required to um, to free that electron. So think of it like this. This is the energy of the electron. HF is the energy of the incident light wave, or ray, or photon, or wave packet, or however you want to describe it. And you take away the amount of energy required to free it from the metal. So that's what that equation is talking about. Very cool equation. Kinetic energy of emitted electrons equals HF minus V. Um, so now it might be useful just to have a look at this in terms of a, uh, a concrete example. Maybe not a concrete example, but um, here's a hunk of metal. And we can have three situations. First situation, um, there's light shining on it, and the energy is low. So energy of the light equals HF is low, and it's too low, and the electron that this light ray comes through the surface, hits the electron, tries to jump it up an energy level, doesn't escape. Okay, so uh, energy low, uh, no emitted. And we're going to have a second situation where um, HF, in this case, is equal to the work function. So the energy from the light uh, is equal to, exactly equal to the work function. So that comes and hits it. And the electron jumps up, stops right at the surface, because it's got exactly the amount to free it, and no more, no less. It either stops right at the surface or just tips over, depending if it's slightly under or slightly out. So that's what the whole work function thing is about. And then thirdly, um, where you've got HF is greater than the work function, and your light ray coming in, therefore, has more than enough energy to make the electron jump up and escape. And that's when you'll have a voltage produced by the conduction, so the electron is free in that case. Um, and that's exactly what this formula is getting at anyway. Cool. Uh, interesting thing to note is that on the graph uh, down here, um, for different materials, as we said, the gradient's the same but they'll just um, appear at different uh, positions. In fact, it wouldn't appear that close because it has to definitely have a negative intercept for the work function. Um, one example, lithium has a greater work function. That means it's harder for electrons to come off it than sodium. There you go. So lithium would be down here and sodium would be uh, up here compared to each other.